But, oh yeah, this is good. So I just wanted to quickly touch upon this. This is a really decent article courtesy of Resident Advisor. It's a little bit, you know, cringe because it's obviously a, something that's um, done in correlation with, uh, what's the brand called? Diesel. So it's like a paid brand piece. So it's a little bit of a fluff piece, whatever it may be. But I thought um, overall it was a good little I, I, insight into what promoters are going through nowadays, right? Because like I said, I was a promoter for a very, very long time in East London, um, five plus years doing my stuff in Dawson and whatnot. And I have to say it was one of the best and hardest jobs I've ever had in my entire life, you know, convincing people to come to a party I was throwing. At the time that I was doing it, wasn't a was a free rave. And I still had trouble trying to convince people to come down i'd book we'd bought the guys doing it with we'd book really good djs we'd go out of our way to always pay people to um you know and we'd actually book and try and book good people to pay them because some people just want to book their friends and not have to pay to kind of keep the cost down but we do all that we design cool flyers would have cool little marketing campaigns bloody blah, blah 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 and it really didn't help anything really in terms of getting people down people just were either up for it or they weren't and it was kind of a hard pill to swallow and sometimes you also had a realization a quite sobering one of how many of sometimes the most successful people that you think online in terms of their views and engagement aren't necessarily some people that people are going to come out for and what want to see um that was very very kind of illuminating and then you realize oh shit so many people are either buying views or they're just not as popular as their social media presence would lead you to believe so it's kind of a hard place to kind of operate in and if you just book your friends you're just basically running parties at a loss and who has money to just keep putting on parties and just having them burn a hole through your you know having money just burn a hole through your pocket and whatnot it's a bit of a dumb thing to do but um it's also something i'm also thinking about doing myself i'm actually thinking about starting a um residence party the essential premise behind it would be to just book loads of really cool residents at different clubs around the world like you know that I, that I kind of rate and then have them play and the whole idea behind it would be like hey the premise is resident DJs are just as good as these big marquee ones but they don't get celebrated because they're usually playing the opening or the closing sets of a club where people are either not there or they're about to leave after the main person's there so this is kind of celebrating them and putting them on the kind of pedestal a little bit and obviously in terms of affordability it probably be a lot easier to book somebody who kind of is a resident at Berghain and you know a main 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 person that kind of flies around the world these different places so that's the kind of premise um the premise I'm sort of going for and that's sort of kind of thing I'm going to kind of flesh out and see if I can do later on but in general these four people are part of the London scene in terms of putting on some really cool events um you got someone from Pussy Palace you got someone from Guthering um you got someone from Cousins and you got someone from No ID talking and I thought it was really interesting because of the point regarding um, the pictures are really cool too i'm guessing they're all wearing diesel as well by glenn martins i'm assuming right is it all diesel by glenn martins but it is yeah everyone looks really really cool in this thing good photo shoots and shit great outfits the photography is fucking booming what i thought was really interesting was the conversation around safe spaces and the admission by everybody that was in a group basically that safe spaces don't exist. I thought that was super sobering because these four people are from, represent some of the more, I would say forward thinking um, parties that kind of represent unrepresented communities, right? Or people that are kind of, you would assume that would need safe space, especially people within the kind of queer LGBTQ plus scene. So to have them basically admit, hey, um, we are women focused, we are LGBTQ plus focused, we are queer focused, and we always try to make sure that we create as safe a space as possible, but there is no such thing as a safe space. It's pretty sobering and pretty interesting to hear, but also kind of bummed me out because, like I said previous times in other podcasts, like I have this weird, um, you know, hope that nightlife, especially parties that we're kind of involved in the dance music, you can kind of create this sort of like temporary utopia where you're able to go and sort of like, you know, unplug from the daily scourges of everyday life and just kind of exist in this safe space where you can just do and be who you are without having the pressures or having people come and basically make you feel less than like you that happens in the sort of outside world. But obviously with me going out quite often and going to all these different spaces myself and also sometimes you know having my own bad behaviors that i'm still trying to kind of root out of my flipping psyche and my kind of overall presence is very difficult to do and then you realize in general nightlife and just clubs in general just just attract dodgy people and then on top of that all of these stories that we hear you know how many stories have we heard about um issues regarding you know uh 
abuse or whatever it may be in party scenes in Paris and whatnot in party scenes of course around Berlin in party scenes around here in London there's always been these issues and they usually happen in a more kind of niche quote-unquote avant-garde quote-unquote you know genre bending pushing the envelope forward thinking alternative club nights um as of course the big kind of marquee t big ticket sort of ministry of sound ones fabric ones but there's a lot of issues happening even in the smaller bits of the scene so it's clear to see that nightlife alone just this very nature just attracts dodgy people yeah people that have bad intentions so it's very difficult to just root it out because you know just random people coming to a party at the end of the day there's only so much you can do beforehand to make it kind of safe for people but this is the question that they asked in the article that i'm going to quickly read it says on illusions of safe space no i'm at the following what is safe who can't guarantee who can't guarantee safety it's just irresponsible to do that especially for people who've missed out on two years of socializing um socialization sorry we know what the club is like people are drunk they will bump into you but someone who's never been in a club won't necessarily understand what is going on or what it's going to be like safety is personal it's about you the crew and what you roll with and how you navigate through the space talking about bumping into people that's one thing i noticed a lot when i went to Bergen recently um there was a real uptick i thought like in that whole kind of like um uh main character sort of like person who kind of just rolls through the dance floor and just pushes everybody else just to get to where they want because i guess the whole like saying excuse me thing is a bit redundant you don't want to keep saying that a million times before you get to the front where you want to get to but there has to be some level of common decency but i saw a lot of people just like holding their friend's hand and just kind of pulling them through um the crowd and just whoever they knock over they knock over but they didn't give a crap and i thought that was really lame but i saw it quite often a lot of times and i guess you know if you then turn around especially me as a straight dude and say hey can you chill out you immediately come across like you're aggressive you're immediately basically you know and there's the assumption is that you're kind of in their space you're basically a guest in these spaces um the spaces are made for people who are predominantly you know represented rep, who represent themselves or you know as gay or queer, queer or whatever it may be so you don't really want to do that it causes a scene but i've probably been bumped and barged way more times in those spaces than i ever have been in like a you know tech house rave for half bake or something you know what i mean it happens way more over there and that kind of techno underground -y, you know all black big stomper shoes wearing kind of space which is really annoying and really weird but hey another person says ag um, no matter what you do you won't be able to keep tabs on 500 people but because your intent is to be mindful about the things that could possibly happen in a room full of 500 people you are able to lead with intent that's what people should read when you see when you read the word safe space policies actions are done to try to make the safe space um for people uh, on hand to act if anything happens but it's also not going to be an idealized version of the world of course and that's something i like a lot because they've i think you see a lot with parties that cross breed price like price per he's like verboten and a few others where they say hey we have people on hand who will be identified with like a wristband or like a armband or a t-shirt that you can go to if you feel uncomfortable with x y and z another one says um another person called lay i think who's part of guffering said um i agree we always say that it's impossible to create a safe space if there are substances and alcohols involved people are intoxicated there's no way you can control the environment you can just try to make it as comfortable for everyone as possible so as bad as this is you know realization maybe the onus should be put on just you know people actually being punished if they do do something untoward that's the only issue that we have now i think in music that's kind of hard to kind of swallow where essentially if something does happen to you what happens i mean what actually changes what actually goes on like for instance um who's that guy i forgot his name but the dude who passed away who unfortunately maybe um self um expired himself when he was accused of what he was accused of of maybe raping i think some girl at his mansion or whatever it may be the lady who came forward with that talk with that allegation do you did you really think she wanted the guy to kill himself i don't think so she maybe wanted him to be held accountable i think it was oscar murilla i think his name was right oscar murilla i think she would probably want him to be held accountable for his actions but i don't think she would have wanted him to self-expire but then he self-expires and essentially the whole issue goes away and then you look kind of nuts if you try to pursue it because a person's passed but you wanted to see actual change in the industry and has there been actual change not really we've seen loads of instances of people coming up and saying you know whatever's happened to them in the 
scene that they didn't like until war just recently the issue obviously with lobster ferryman um and the founder there and somebody who was working with has there really been a change has there really been an investigation no details we don't really know um that's the real hard part of it so i think we're all aware that say you know this the illusion of safe spaces is what it is an illusion but there also needs to be a collective sort of um what would you call it there's be some sort of collective responsibility for making sure people who are at you, you kind of suffer the consequences of somebody being a dick or somebody being gross that the person does face some sort of punishment i don't know what it is personally i don't know if it is you know somebody facing jail time i don't know if it is somebody being excommunicated dropped off for bookings and stuff or whatnot but something needs to be done so that you can deter people because right now it doesn't feel like it happens it feels like if you have fans who don't care enough then usually you can kind of survive anything it doesn't really matter how bad the allegations are if you have fans don't care it usually doesn't matter and especially on top of that if you're represented by somebody really influential or like a label or like a booking agency then you can really skate and um, by and not really be um you know not really be held accountable for your actions in the slightest which is really really horrible in my opinion but hey you know what do i know in this stuff but i do recommend you check it out it's a pretty decent article um this is the title london nightlife today according to four promoters like i said it's a uh, promotion piece and done in junction with diesel so maybe it's not the best representation of an actual honest piece because it's a bit fluffy because obviously it's a brand piece and sponsored marketing whatever maybe but i still feel it was pretty valuable to read and definitely inspired me to think about maybe getting back on the promotion um thing and putting on my own rave like i said before so watch this space